Hello everyone and welcome to another audio podcast um, around uh, this series, the Buster Cap series and this is the final um, uh, audio podcast in this particular series. Um, this is uh, uh, The Scientist and it's another uh, Storm Robotics production and uh, I'm going to talk about the use of irradiated red blood cell um, products or red cell components. So to begin with, uh, I'm actually going to sort of follow on from from um, the previous um, uh, the previous um, audio podcast uh, and uh, talk a little bit about um, graft uh, graft versus host disease, abbreviated as GVHD, and it's caused by the proliferation of the host of um, of mature donor derived T lymphocytes in response to both major and minor histocompatibility antigens of host origin. Ionizing uh, ionizing, uh, radiation stops or it inhibits lymphocyte uh, lymphocyte activity and uh, what's known as a blast uh, blast transformation. So um, in relating to um, in, in relating to hematology um, patients um, where, for example, uh, have particular hematolo- hematological uh, diseases, um, let's say, for example, as prerequisite, what happens in, in um, patients with normal, in normal hematology, normal, normal general physiology, is that I, um, through, if, uh, if patient, if an individual needs blood transfusing, uh, transfusion, then basically um, uh, irradiated blood uh, blood is 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 prescribed and issued, so it um, uh, stops and prevents um, the proliferation or activity of of uh, white cells or lymphocytes attacking and actually also at the same time where um, where there can be um, certain cells that that are susceptible to um, um, to becoming and uh, becoming um, uh, or be, uh, be, becoming more like um, uh, blast blast type cells, which then are almost precursors for um, serious um, um, serious uh, hematological illnesses and diseases. <clears throat> uh, ionizing irradiation uh, can impair can actually uh, impair granulocyte uh, function and granulocytes are are derived from um, uh, uh, are derived um, from sort of neutrophils um, but um, ionizing uh, irradiation can uh, can impair uh, uh, can impair uh, uh, can impair the fun- their function and so um, the impairment um, is actually dose dependent uh, dose dependent Granulocyte um, uh, is affected by very small doses, very small doses, uh, um, very very small doses of irradi- irradiation. However, um, however, um, in um, when it comes to when it comes to um, when it comes to do- um, blood donation and screening um, and um, a- a- and uh, sort of um, the steps that are taking place. Um, in relating to blood component, blood components being um, uh, from blood components being prescribed to being issued, um, generally there's um, lots of uh, processes. There's lots of uh, there's lots of things that happen and take place to actually um, prevent um, uh, um, uh, in whole blood um, that's been do- donated, for example. Um, where uh, at least in in relating to blood components that's been donated, that the cell um, uh, uh, the cell um, uh, the cell the cell um, the cell the blood cell uh, red cells apart from the red cells and other cells that make up whole blood that they are not affected and they can achieve um, the appropriate efficacy once transfused. So um, basically. Um, Small doses, small doses of irradiation um, uh, through these um, blood components um, can 
can affect um, I can affect the the sort of the the sort of integrity of particular cells. However, uh, at the same time, um, it do, um, the the cells uh, are um, uh, are able to uh, function um, uh, once transfused and uh, generally speaking it's not um, it's not really um, a major issue uh, a dose of uh, 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 of 20 uh, GY uh, is likely to eliminate uh, lymphocytic um, activity and prevent and actually prevent graft versus host disease without causing significant damage to granular sites um, or um, um, affecting chemotactic um, or bactericidal activity. So this is important. Mature red cells appear to be highly resistant to radiation damage. And so um, I'm now going to, uh, to highlight some, uh, some points around the indications for the use of irradiated uh, red cell um, red cell um, blood um, products um, blood components or red cell products and um, so here in this particular slide um, this is a typical um, picture it's a, 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 a picture sorry of what a blood um, what a blood uh, a component uh, red cells or pack of red cells looks like once it's been donated um, and basically this one is um, uh, O and uh, rhesus, uh, rhesus, D, rhesus D positive um, and there is um, there is additional uh, different uh, additional information in relating to to the um, uh, uh, to to the uh, re uh, re sort of the rhesus groups, and this one this blood group um, is um, uh, irradiated. Um, it says um, a leukocyte depleted, so it's leuco depleted. It's irradiated um, and uh, it's CMV negative, um, and um, generally this blood group um, uh, can be issued uh, to pretty much anyone. Um, so, in line with that, um, post-transplant patients uh, under the direction of the of a transplant team can have uh, can have uh, or can be issued uh, blood uh, blood uh, for transfusion if required or if needed. Generally, all recipients of allergenic um, or autologous bone marrow or peripheral um, uh, uh, blood stem cell transplants can have um, can have uh, blood transfusions. Um, Hodgkin's so Hodgkin's uh, there's something called Hodgkin's disease, and so Hodgkin's disease patients or patients at any stage of the disease can um, can uh, have blood transfusion if if required. Um, neonate exchange transfusion um, um, where patients who are, are newly born um, and um, where where they're known to ha have um, anemia um, uh, can have um, exchange uh, would be eligible for exchange transfusion and um, there's uh, top-up transfusions of neonates who receive who who received um, intrauterine uh, transfusion so um, basically once uh, uh, once a patient or once um, the neonate is uh, conceived and born um, uh, if they uh, if they if there were issues um, in birth if there were issues in birth and required intrauterine tra um, intrauterine transfusions then they are eligible to have uh, uh, top up transfusions um, thereafter um, uh, if um, if if required.
children uh, children or young people with congenital who have been diagnosed with congenital immunodeficiency syndromes involving T lymphocytes um, are, are eligible for um, blood components um, and transfusions from first or second degree immunocom immunocompetent relatives uh, from human leukocyte selected donors um, would uh, would be uh, would be uh, would be appropriate. So, what about the use of um, CMV negative red cell uh, products? So here is a is a is a, a picture um, uh, of um, of uh, blood group uh, blood group A rhesus D positive um, and um, uh, there's some information additional information to uh, other research groups um, uh, sorry other um, uh, other sort of uh, 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 sort of antigen antibodies um, uh, and other uh, thing other um, other um, information in relating to uh, CMV neg um, and uh, this one again is um, leuco, uh, is leuco, uh, leukocyte depleted, um, and uh, it has um, uh, it has um, uh, generally been prepared um, for um, for anyone whose blood group um, who, who's the same blood group. Um, there was there was some. Um, some uh, um, some context in in literature um, um, that uh, it was uh, it was first reported in in around 19, 1966 that cytomegavirus or CMV was associated with what is now refer referred to as or has been at least referred to as post transfusion post transfusion mononucleosis. Um, and infants infected, infants in, infected with CMV may become severely ill with symptoms including pneumonia and hepatitis. And CMV may be uh, associated with transfusion uh, associated hepatitis and is, is one of the most important causes of congenital viral infections that may cause death in premature, uh, in premature infants. So the patients at risk um, are, are, are thus. So there's premature infants or infants weighing um, less than uh, 1,200 grams at birth. There's recipients of organ transplants. There's patients receiving immunosuppressive, uh, immunosuppression or chemotherapy. And uh, Pregnant women, because C CMV can persist latently and active infection and active infections may develop during pregnancy. And then pre patients with immunosuppressive diseases um, um, or diseases or with diseases with immunodeficiency, for example, may develop um, uh, may develop uh, sort of CMV um, related complications or, or can develop CMV. Uh, type complications and uh, for example um, uh, those who are, um, those who are uh, who, who have human immunodeficiency virus virus or HIV so three types of um, uh, CMV infection are possible in blood transfusion recipients so primary infection, um, when a previously exposed recipient is transfused with blood from an actively or latently infected donor. If I just repeat that, so primary infection, um, when a previously uh, unexposed recipient is transfused with blood from an actively or latent, latently infected donor. Reactivated infections may be produced when a seropositive recipient is transfused. These infections are generally asymptomatic. And then reinfection by a strain of cytomegalovirus in the donor's blood that is different uh, from the one originally infecting 
the recipient in transfusion uh, in sorry in in blood donation sites um, before anyone uh, is donating uh, donating blood as mentioned uh, in a in a previous um, audio podcast there's generally a screening process that takes place and so primary uh, as I mentioned primary infection when a previous uh, an exposed recipient is transfused with blood from an actively or latently infected donor generally that process that process that takes place in blood donation sites actually uh, omits omits um, any um, uh, or, or reduces reduces and, and omits um, the probability um, that that uh, that uh, infection uh, can uh, can occur through um, through um, an uh, an infected donor. Um, so indications for CMV zero negative red cell or uh, red cell components um, are thus. Um, so pregnant women intrauterine transfusions transfusions to CMV negative neonates and infants in the first year of life and transfusions uh, to the following groups of CMV seronegative patients so after allergenic um, bone marrow peripheral uh, a bone marrow peripheral blood progenerator progenerate uh, progenitor cell transplants and where the donor is also CMV uh, zero negative. And also um, where after autologous bone marrow peripheral um, blood progenitor, uh, progenitor cell transplants, potential recipients of allergenic bone marrow and peripheral blood progenitor cell transplants and uh, patients with HIV infection and patients with congenital immunodeficiency syndromes who are zero uh, who are zero negative. So CMV um, is transmitted by uh, uh, leukocytes um, or white blood cells. Um, therefore, as as there is a two percent false negativity that, uh, with CMV testing, leukodepleted sorry leukodepleted blood uh, is just as effective uh, if not more so at preventing uh, CMV transmissions as CMV um, as CMV negative blood and this mainly is uh, so leukodepleted blood or leukodepleted whole blood because of the irradiation process that takes place it omit it would basically where the red cells um, that can potentially be infectious going through an irradiation process actually wipes out those um, those particular um, those cells or leukocytes that um, actually could prompt um, an infective uh, an infective infective response through a blood transfusion So a little bit about the use of phenotype blood, particularly rhesus, uh, particularly rhesus uh, and K and K typed or big K typed. So um, here is a uh, here is a bag of blood. Uh, as a picture of a bag of blood. Um, o uh, blood group O rhesus D positive, um, and um, here uh, there is something called H H um, HBS negative as well, and and some other information. Um, as well around the uh, around this um, um, uh, pack of uh, whole blood. Uh, so here um, uh, there is um, an arrow pointing to uh, uh, where where the where the, where is big M big M positive. Uh, um, and there's patients with hemo uh, particular hemoglo uh, hemoglobinopathies who may become or who may already be transfusion dependent. 
and also selecting uh, selected young transfusion dependent patients, for example, um, young people or patients who might um, have um, uh, oncology or uh, cancer um, related uh, conditions. All uh, premenopausal females of any age should be given uh, uh, big K negative blood. Uh, again, that relates to that relates to the um, the type of um, uh, re, um, the type of a rhesus group, um, but also um, uh, or um, can um, can uh, can also uh, where where these uh, where premenopausal uh, females can uh, have K negative a big K negative blood unless uh, proven uh, to have uh, K, uh, K positive. All D negative premenopausal females of any age. Um, uh, uh, in this slide, um, there's there's a few there's a few subgroups um, in relating to the rhesus rhesus uh, rhesus side of things. Um, can have these uh, can have these again. Uh, can have blood components which have these um, uh, particular uh, particular rhesus, rhesus groups um, and combinations of these um, uh, and um, uh, with proven uh, or proven or proven uh, with K, K, uh, big K positive. Yeah, to reduce the chances of allo uh, immunization, partially phenotype uh, pheno phenotype matched blood is usually given. So that means, uh, for example, a rhesus, uh, a rhesus uh, and K, um, big K. Uh, the Another point I want to make here is about um, uh, about um, sickle cell disease. So the majority of sickle cell disease patients um, are of Afro-Caribbean Afro -Caribbean background, where the commonest, where well, the commonest rhesus rhesus haplotype is is RRO or big D, uh, big D, small C or uh, small and small E, um, virtually um, are all K, uh, big K negative, um, and it is of great use if the full full phenotype of the patient um, is established um, before uh, before transfusion uh, before transfusion it is also essential that blood transfused transfused to sickle cell disease patients is itself tested for hbs um, and found to be negative I want to say thank you uh, for listening to this uh, episode um, uh, and this series. Um, uh, and um, uh, this has been um, uh, another Storm of Bostics production. And here is uh, just a, a, a page on a slide on uh, sort of the references uh, and, and acknowledgements. Thank you for listening to uh, this uh, series. Um, this audio podcast again feel free to use the timestamps to um, make any notes um, etc and hopefully um, uh, uh, catch you um, on on the next one thank you